Hey guys, it's Clovis, and I want to talk about Fletcher Corbin Day, because there's actually no video on this. I might make a better video on this, actually. If you guys want to see it, let me know. Um, so, it's actually, you save him in Reaper's Coast, right? Fletcher Corbin Day, he's in the Lone Wolf camp. You kill all the Lone Wolves in Reaper's Coast, and you talk to this dude who is not like another Lone Wolf. He's actually, like, um, he wants to get out of there, and he's grateful that you kill the dudes there and save him. Interesting thing with this guy, I'm pretty sure this is actually a bug and a glitch, but if you sell this guy your uniques, he will change the level of it. And as it turns out, when you get to um, Arx, the last act in the game, all the uniques that he's holding are now level 18. So I'm going to talk to him now. And you can see I've, basi I've sold him. Look at all these uniques he have. This is all just uniques that I've collected throughout the game. And I've just basically given them to him. It, you don't even need to sell them to him, you can just give them to him, as long as they're in his inventory. For example, this is the Reaver's Axe that's on Blood Moon Island. It's level 18 now, you can see it's quite powerful. Um, this is the Eternal Stormblade, you find it's just a one-handed sword, which isn't very good in um, uh, the Nameless Isle. But for example, it's now upgraded to level 18, and you can see all these things are. Again, Excruciating Echo, you find that in Reaper's Coast in the uh, Wrecker's Caves. It is now level 18. So, this way you can get all these level 18 uniques that are actually very powerful. Some of them are actually very, very, very powerful. And um, not all of them, but some of them are actually very strong. And this means you can also have level 18 weapons um, before you actually do any fights on arcs. And you can see what I've got is actually Loha's uh, Source Hammer. So if you do Loha's quest in, again, Reaper's Coast, he will give you the unique... Uh, for whatever level that you are when you uh, when it pops up on the screen. This is true for everyone, actually. So, for example, in uh, Fort Joy, when you go to Zalaskar, the Sundering Cleaver that he has, uh, it's... When you, like, open up his inventory or you kill him, for example, it will generate that item at the level you are when you open up his inventory, basically. So it'll be generally level 4 or 5 when you get that. Um, so you get this... Loha's two-headed source hammer when you're level 11 or 12, depending on when you do the quest. Sell it to Fletcher Corbin Day, and then at level 18 you have this unique um, hammer that's actually very, very good. Three strength, one warfare, one two-handed, 15% chance to stun for two turns, gives you onslaught. And uh, I don't know, I think this is probably the best level 18 hammer you could probably roll for, unless you were getting like... Um, or even get, I guess, because uh, prior to this, I think the best item you could possibly get in the game would be a level 17 Divine two-handed. And the level scaling in this game is so nuts that I think this would actually do more than like an optimal level 17 Divine two-handed Source Hammer. Um, works with belts too. Um, so Anime Fallen, Fallen. You get this from Aethna, who's uh, in Cloisterwood in Reaper's Coast. And, yeah, look at this. Two Wits, one Warfare, one Polymorph. I mean, the rest of the stuff's kind of useless. Again, single-handed. We're using two-handed. Constitution's not very useful either. 20% Poison res Resistance. Like, you don't really need that. But, I mean, if you go to vendors and you can't find any good uh, loot and you don't want to sit there and re-roll for everything, it's just guaranteed this stuff that you just... Whatever, like, unique items you've out-leveled, just sell them to... Um, Fletcher Corp and Day, you can do that to any point before arcs, and then when you go to his inventory in arcs, all of the in, uh, all of the uniques in his inventory will be level 18, and then you can buy them back off of him. They're quite expensive, but yeah, whatever. I mean, you can even pickpocket him if you want. Uh, but you can do this with, like, anything. Like, again, Captain's Jet Dexterous Heals you get uh, in Fort Joy. Pretty much at the last waypoint, if you look around, like, in the hills there. Just in his favor. That's what I got. Yeah, Deadeye's Signature Crossbows, that's a Lone Wolf Crossbow. Three Finesse, one Huntsman. Quite a bit of damage as well. Um, and you can see the damage values I've got. It's These could be higher. Um, actually, this, these are Origin, like, these are cheated gear, but I didn't actually pick anything. I didn't, like, sit there and roll and give myself, like, plus 10 Finesse and stuff like that with my gear. So you can actually get better gear that I'm using, just ignore the fact that this is Origin gear. Um, but yeah, with all the... Um, like this thing, Amulet of the Void, this is from Fort Joy as well. It's one of the first amulets you drop from that um, Void Woken dude. And now you have a three finesse, one ranged amulet. You know? 
Um, so it's just cool. It's something you can do. Um, I probably showed you what I think are some of the best uniques that you could give this guy to upgrade. I think Lohar's two-handed source hammer. This is like no other unique two-handed weapon that you give this guy. I think is actually better than this level eighteen. Um, if I actually open up his inventory again, you can see like um, yeah, the execution in Inyan's axe and Hannah Lachey. These are the level nine axes you get at the start of Reaper's Coast, and they're pretty good. But like for example, and even like look, three strength, one two-handed. That's pretty good. Um, twenty-five percent cleave damage, but um, oh yeah, and ten percent critical chance. This has 20% critical chance. This is actually a lot better, I think. Um, like, these are fine, but they don't have a rune slot, so... Um, when you compare them to Lohar's 2 handed Source Hammer with, you know, just a giant masterwork rune of power, just for 15% physical damage bonus and 3 more strength, it's just straight up better. It gives you Onslaught as well, which, I mean, it's... That's an alright spell. A uh, weapon skill. Don't need it, but, uh, hey, it just <laughs> destroys people very quickly, so, yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can sell this guy whatever uniques you collect throughout the game. And again, like, for example, Eternal Stormblade. I don't think this is particularly good, but if you actually, like, I don't know, you do one of those, like, uh, roleplay kind of builds. You have a guy that has a sword and shield, like a paladin or something. Pretty sick item, actually. It's just nice to have a level 18 uh, one-handed sword. Otherwise, you're hitting for, like, two damage with, um, a weak one-handed sword in this game. They're not very powerful. Um, so yeah. Go ahead and sell. You can sell anything that's sellable to this guy, obviously. Sell him all of your uniques. Again, you've even got Knight of Rogier boots and uh, other uniques like the Destroyer's gloves uh, from uh, even Emrak. Emrak's not that good, but um, this is what I mean, yeah. Just sell this guy uniques and you can buy him back level 18. And um, you don't even need to do this. It's just an option that you can do and get some powerful gear at level 18. So, yeah. Enjoy.